In the next few minutes, we're going to show you how easy it is to install and use the Intelligent Video of I.O. Image. The Intelligent Video Detection of I.O. Image IOI boxes takes less than five minutes to set up. It's a five-step process. Let's get started. Step 1. Plug in. Step 2. Browse. Step 3. Set depth. Step 4. Select rule. Step 5. Detect. Let's go over the basics. The IOI box has an Ethernet port with power over Ethernet or PoE support, terminal block connectors for wire termination of RS-485 and RS-232 as well as relay output and alarm input, a reset button for rebooting the system, power hookup, video input for analog camera inputs, bi-directional audio in and audio out connections, the splitter is included with the IOI box, and a video output for support of analog systems. To connect the IOI box unit, simply connect the video output of the stationary camera to the video input connection on the IOI box. Connect the Ethernet cable from the network, and then connect the power. Additionally, at this time, you can connect the two-way audio, the relay output and alarm input terminal block, as well as the RS-232, RS-485, which can be used for PTZ controller connection. At this time, it's a good idea to note the default IP printed on the label of the unit. You will need this later on. Put the unit in an outdoor protective enclosure, in this case, next to the camera. Depending on the installation, the IOI box can be put in the camera case, protective cabinet, on a rack, or on a shelf. This depends on the IOI box model and your general configuration. By the way, this is also a good opportunity to record the camera height from the ground level where the detection is to take place. For the next few steps, we will have a helper in the field with a locking tape measure to assist with custom setup. On the workstation, in Internet Explorer, enter the IP taken from the IOI label. If you change this IP for your network requirements, enter that instead. Click Setup. In the logon prompt that appears, enter your administrative username and password and click Logon. After accessing the setup, we select Analytics to begin configuring the depth. As our man in the field travels to different locations in the scene, we will place markers to match the helper's height. To move and resize an existing marker, click and drag the marker to where the helper is seen standing. Scroll the mouse so the marker matches the head to toe size. If the helper's height is different than the default, enter the height in the properties, marker height. For the best result, we will have our helper in the field stand in several different places well distributed throughout the field of view. To add an additional marker, click the human marker, position it over the helper in the field, scroll to resize, and click to set. Then to return to select mode, click the select icon. We will repeat locating markers in four positions. All markers should be located on the ground plane for best results. Now we move on to repositioning the ground guideline. By clicking and dragging each of the endpoints of the ground guideline, we can line it up to an in-the-field measurement. Our helper is using a locking tape measure to measure off a known distance. For optimal results, the ground guideline should be positioned at an angle within the field of view. Once the ground guideline is set, Enter the distance between the two points in the ground guideline properties. Moving on to the camera and horizon settings. Click set horizon to, click the horizon icon, and click and drag the blue horizon line to match the horizon for your scene. To set to camera height, click set camera height settings, change to camera height. Click apply to save your settings. You will be prompted if the save is successful. You may be asking yourself, how do we know that the measurements we just did were successful? The IOI box allows you to check this rather easily. Click Verification. Next, click the Interactive Ground Guideline. Then select two points within the scene. You'll get a readout from the system of the calculated length of that line. This value should be representative of the approximate real-world size. You can check more than one location. Next, we click the Human Marker. Now check that the key areas where detection will be done are accurate. Move the marker around on the scene to see how the perspective size changes within the depth. Now that we checked the depth, let's move on to the definition of a detection rule. Click Rules. 
In this screen, you can select from the available detection and define precisely where and what you want to detect. You see here the default full field of view detection. For the region of interest, you can erase part of it or all of it and draw your own. The drawing of a region of interest indicates where detection is to take place. By default, each added rule has a full field of view region of interest configured. In this screen, you can select from the available detection and define precisely where and what you want to detect. To the right of the display screen, you will see settings. These settings help define what type of detection and additionally the properties of that detection. By changing these properties, you can change the criteria that will affect the type of detection and scenarios that will be detected. Go ahead and click Apply to save your settings. Well, that concludes how to install and set up detection. For turning on the detection, known as arming the camera, we go back to the live view and click Arm. The IOI box will now automatically watch over this area we defined. In addition, you can clear alarms from the screen. Well, that's it. IO Image offers a full range of solutions that are designed for simplicity. Feel free to check our website at ioimage.com for additional information and downloads.